Hello and welcome to The Voice. You are now listening to The Voice on the Urban Houston Network 43.5. I'm Maxine Lane Seals and we have the host Clara Brett and we are so honored today to have our very own Superintendent of the North Forest Independent School District, Ms. Edna Forte. Thank you so much for visiting with us, Ms. Forte. I know that you had a, a big morning this morning on 102, and then you took the time out to come to be with us today on The Voice. Well, thank you. It's actually my pleasure to be here. Uh, it, these are the moments I, I really live for. I do like to come out and talk with the community and partake in rich conversation. And so again, matters not if it started early in the morning. <laughs> I'm happy to be here this evening with you. That is the job of a superintendent. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> Everywhere are. at the same time. Yes. First, I want to take the privilege of thanking you for everything that you, the board, your staff, and this community has done to bring this district alive again. We know that there is a lot of work ahead of us that demands that was put on us from the commissioner. So you wanna just make it clear to those people who are making their own decisions about what's going on. We can say, Clara, we heard it from the source. Yeah, it's the old saying from the horse's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me say on behalf of those, all those that you mentioned, the trustees especially, we uh, actually want to thank the community. Yeah. Uh, if not for the community and their involvement, their support, their non-wavering disposition mm -hmm. as we went through what was a very difficult year, though difficult we did not succumb That's right. to public opinion. And we pressed on and we're in a good place right now. And so having been, uh, afforded some more time to continue some good work we're most excited uh, it was a very deliberate effort I, I think i mentioned that to some it was something that required us to actually sit down and look at the outcomes that we were seeking to achieve and then really work backwards with those prerequisites that we needed to build up in the district so it, we're in a good place we're closing out this school year in a positive place we opened yeah. up the school year with the mantra focused and determined Yes, right. It was going to be a year of champions. They, and so they it's tried to discourage such, us, but they, we weren't they, they discouraged. They tried, but yeah. we're, we're still standing. Yeah, we're still standing and going to keep standing. Absolutely. I say the same thing, but I, I know that we wanted more time, more than one year, to do what we have to do, but it was so good to hear and, and the feeling of, of the board and, and you this morning talking about the fact that in regard to what you place on us, we're going to fight to the end, and we're going to win this battle. Absolutely. It makes me smile as well because I think we're making believers out of others yeah. who are less inclined to believe that good things come to from those. situations that might appear to be dire to some. Mm -hmm. But what, hope is always possible. Why don't we tell the audience exactly what those um, demands put on, that was put up on us are so that they can be clear of them? Well, if you go back, and I don't want to go too far back, but if you go back, the district had been identified to have some internal weaknesses within its program design, basically under academic performance on the secondary level, uh, our high school tier. And then financially, we had some challenges in the school district. And so when you go back and you look specifically at the commissioner's order, basically that's what he's outlining in the order. He's explaining what it is that he expects the school district to achieve within the amount of time we've been allotted. So one example would be we have to continue with our fund balance. We were fortunate enough this past year to end with a fund balance and we are already planning to end with a sizable fund balance at the end of this fiscal year which will end the end of August. And so we're in a good place. Academically, there are always other variables that we have to work through. But I need to say, because this has been a point of confusion to the broader public, Norfolk's independent school district through its history has never been underperforming in a core content area. That's good. That means in the areas of reading, math, science, social studies, Norfolk's independent school district has always met the threshold that had been established by the state. All right, all right. That's wonderful. That, that ought to be a hand clap. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's one of the things I like yeah. the parents to understand. We are educating our children. Our children are doing well. But some years back, when No Child Left Behind came into form and some other accountability frameworks came in, the indicators became more complicated. And one of the indicators, though it's been, I agree this is a very important indicator, it was completion rate. But completion rate indicator is an indicator that's all-encompassing. So though we don't have completion 
uh, situations on our elementary and our middle school campuses, if we have a completion rate indicated that's not met, the entire district will be rated academically unacceptable. And that's really how North Forest was rated academically unacceptable. Exactly. I For see, no other reason. I really see that as being unfair, really. How could you do all that just with one school and then the whole district is is accountable for that just that one high school or is it the high school that we are talking about? It's the high school that we're talking about. And then many people share your, your view mm -hmm. in regards to the accountability frameworks. They share your view in regards to having one indicator bear so much on, on the whole on the whole, on the whole district. outcome of yeah, the school the whole, district. Whole outcome of, now when it says completion, does that mean that that student that has gotten to the eleventh grade planning on going to the 12th grade, does get to the 12th grade, however, does not pass the state test. Is that one of the, uh, the reasons for no completion? Well, they have to pass a state test, but they also have to graduate. So we really start tracking the completion rate from ninth grade entry point. So when the students come into ninth grade, it's our responsibility as a school district to make sure that we monitor the students' progress. And that's why it's so important for the students as well as the parents to be aware of the sequence of courses that are expected, the personal graduation plans for the students, what they need to take in order to complete their program. So they, you're saying that they don't complete from the ninth grade, they might drop out? Is that what Correct. that is? Correct. They're dropping out. Some students are dropping out, but I would say in this situation with North Forest, it was very interesting because that was during the time, if you go back to the completion four-year mm -hmm. window, that's when there were many tropical storms and situations that were occurring Moving, in the area. Yeah. We had some data quality issues. Unfortunately, uh, in the state of Texas, if you have data quality issues as far as your data submission, you're not held harmless. So if you submit data and the data is not coded properly, you're still held accountable for the data. North Forest, when we went back and we looked at some of the record keeping, that mm -hmm. was the case. There were situations within tracking those cohorts where there were times when there were gaps in school. We had situations that occurred where the record keeping was just not such that the district was able to properly record. Uh -huh. But nonetheless, it was our responsibility at the end of the year to reconcile those numbers and get those things Forrest, in order, and we did not. And so it was held against us. That was uh, Forrest Brook just lost all records. Right. From, the, from Allison, I believe it was Allison, all the records Absolutely, were lost. I don't have the sequence part of years of most of the records that Smiley were lost as well. Right, when mm -hmm. the administration building actually changed it changed closer, yeah, all that was in, in was play. Yes. Yeah, it was in play. And uh, so they didn't give us any credibility for that. Well, you, when we appealed, we appealed on that point. That was one mm -hmm. of the points. Mm -hmm. uh, nonetheless, it was a point that we appealed on, but the agency decided like other local education agencies across the state of Texas, we too had the response, we bear the responsibility oh. of correcting those records prior to the end of a year. Because when you close out a fiscal year, I, I imagine it's just like with your taxes. When you close out a fiscal year, it's a closed year. And so the anticipation was the district would have settled up and reconciled those differences. But we did appeal, and mm -hmm. we always will, though we may not have won formally uh, on that point, mm -hmm. I will forever explain it. No, no that's right. Because I believe that <laughs> data needs quality, to be it needs to be explained because it, it leaves uh, the community with a wrong impression of the mm. school district. Yes, because we love our children out here. We really do. Absolutely. And anybody who comes out to North Forest, I say you can't come out to North Forest without falling in love with North Forest. That's true. And so you can That's hear true. what you hear, but when you come out, it's totally uh, a wonderful place. It's literally green, mm -hmm. lush and rich. Yes. Uh, and so much, very fertile. Fertile in many ways, fertile yes. for learning and many other things. And so, again, but data quality was a piece. And so we're working on that now. Those are really situations that will no longer plague the district. We're very much on top of those things. And that's why I'm so happy that you came here today because of the fact that I heard Marcus state this morning and saying that encouraging others to just, just come and visit because sometimes people hear so much and they take exactly what they've heard don't have any information to go on. It's just somebody said it, I believe it, and that's it. He, he used an example where he had gone into Worthing School and out of all the bad images he had heard or whatever, when he got there, he saw a different situation and he found himself and he also committed himself and challenged other businesses and individuals to come and be a part of North Forest. And, and he ended that song, which I, the pro I thought was so great, 
it's going to be a brighter day. Absolutely. It was going to be a brighter day. So with you doing all of that research and taking it in uh, to the uh, commissioner for him to see, mm -hmm. in regard to what his statement was on there, we know that you guys did a good job on getting all of that information together and bringing it in and, and working with our students. So I hope that the parents that are listening here today and living in this community, go get your children, bring them back to North Forest. The superintendent is here. You saw the work that she and her board and her staff and everyone has done. And you need to just come on back home mm -hmm. where you belong. Um, another thing um, you were talking about, no child left behind, Clara. You've been talking about that just about every program. You can <laughs> have an opportunity I, to get that on, and I was I on the web the, the I, other day. I was day. hoping the superintendent would keep on talking about that no <laughs> child left behind because we have uh, we have been fooled a lot, haven't we? There have been um, we, we've been a bit fooled, fooled for lack of a better word. <laughs> I, 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 for, I was searching for a word, but it would not come, so I have to take your word. <laughs> Uh, no Child Left Behind, and what I was saying earlier, No Child mm. Left Behind was constructed under proper intent. Mm. It was built under another political party at the time. When they built the No Child Left Behind frameworks, it was to improve and elevate education in schools across the nation. Uh, what happens, though, when they built the framework, there was a requirement for annual improvement, and, and they mm. were steep requirements. We're actually two years out from every child uh, being at 100%. And so these were steep requirements from the onset. What we're seeing with No Child Left Behind is certain demographic groups are not meeting those measures. Matter of fact, as we move forward, all demographic groups are not meeting are beginning measures. to have challenges with because the statistician will tell you it's it's uh, the way the, the formulas were built, they were beyond rigid. Uh, and when states vary in building their own tests, also that has an impact on how students will perform. And then we have to, uh, uh, it, it's something that comes from the, uh, the government as well, they set a, set a standard, don't they, with that no child left behind? They do, but our current administration really won't even say no child left behind. <laughs> our, our current administration, President Obama, he refers to it as ESA. He goes back to Elementary mm -hmm. and, and Secondary Education Act, and so that's how he refers to it. No child left behind is under reauthorization. Matter of fact, this Thank week, goodness. Uh, this is contact your local congressperson week. Uh, there are no child left yeah. behind. All because right, everybody, everybody contact your local congressperson. And actually, on April 18th, everybody's supposed to reach April out 18th and contact. make a call on behalf of youth and All say, right. what can we do to get this federal requirement reauthorized so they can better accommodate the learners. And are, the we, are we speaking about our congresspersons in the state as well as the... We're, we're talking about uh, our federal... In Washington. Washington. Okay. Congresswoman well, I have, Jackson, I have no doubt that contacting our congresswoman... That that Sheila Jackson Lee, we won't have that problem. The Honorable <laughs> Sheila Jackson Lee, who's... We will not have that problem. And, with ...and has worked with us. Yes, she but has. I, I read that on the mm -hmm. web the other day, that it was mm -hmm. been reauthorized and that... So here we go again. Yeah. Call Eric. your congresswoman, the Honorable Sheila Jackson Lee. Let her know. And there are some more too. That right. Well, if you know some of the others, that even though that you don't elect them, um, if for this area, well, Jean Green. Mm -hmm. Jean Green is Jean Green one has one. part of this area, and I think those are the only two. But what about basically that service this area? But just let, just give them a call and let them know. Don't we have some more that's not of this area? See, we've the voice of Houston too, as well as North Forest. So if it's not of this, if you have a congressperson not of this area, check that congressperson out and tell them what you want to have done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Absolutely. let's do I, I that. Agree. Very check good. them out and tell them what, you, what, what you have done. And not only uh, just this area, we talking about all over Texas as far as the, the voice can reach. If you're hearing our voice, <laughs> call your congressman and uh, our woman in on April before April the what 18th. April 18th is the uh -huh. official day, is so official I would day. say as well. Please do that because the indicators uh, that were brought forth by No Child Left Behind have brought on unnecessary hardship in some situations. Mm -hmm. I think North Forest Independent School District has had to move through the framework and the maze of the framework and find itself on the other side just through our opportunity to go up to the agency and have some additional conversation but again make that call and I'm sure within a short period of time the economy mm -hmm. is somewhat improving that we'll be able to see the change within the educational reform in our nation. 
Go ahead. Supreme Ma Court, when, when, when you receive the uh, information about North Forest that we would be extended another year, everything went out, it was like it went out on the AP wire. So we're going to break right now, and when we come back, we want to talk about how that, that went out and the things that we need to do to help you to get ahead for this next year. Thank you. And so we'll be returning back in a few minutes. Remember, you're, li you're listening to you. The Voice on Urban Houston Network. 43.5. All right. All right. <laughs> the Voice, segment two, episode seven, and three, two, one, and rolling tape. Thank you for returning back of listening to and watching, watching. There you go. as the voice comes through giving you information of what's going on in the North Forest Independent School District. You are, li you are now looking at the Urban Houston Network, which is on 43.5. We have again our superintendent, Mrs. Etna Forte. And as we begin to break, I was talking about the minute that the word got out I know from my experience of being a board member, TEA usually send you information after they've sent it to the media <laughs> and everybody uh, Knows hears everybody. about it, but all of you, and then you get it, and then it gets out in the community. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, it went, uh, I think it just went over an AP wire or something saying North Forest was extended one more year. We know that you were striving for more than that, but we were so happy that this district was not closing. I know I called my neighbors and said, you ready, ready to have a parade? <laughs> well, no, we can just start blowing our horns and go down the street and, and do whatever. But uh, tell us about that day, that letter and... Well, that day we were anxious. We were anticipating a letter. We, we had a timeline in our minds, but nothing definitive on paper. But mm. We were anticipating a letter, but much like you shared, Maxine, the agency has a tendency to share things after hours. Uh -huh. And so we received, I actually received a call from the uh, Board of Trustees attorneys after hours on Friday afternoon, the staff had already gone for the day, mm. that the agency had extended a year to North Forest Independent School District. And much like you said, now because we live in a virtual world, exactly. the information went through at several different channels uh, at the same time. I believe the information was sent to me, to the attorneys, also the local media, and it was sent from a higher level. And so there were many people that found out at the same time. Matter of fact, it was a 38-page document. And my nature is to read. Before I even have a conversation, I want to read through a document. I want to make sure I understand all exactly. points. I began to get inundated with phone calls, phone calls of congratulations, <laughs> phone calls of what, what, what does it say, phone calls of, all, of so many things. And, and many people wanted comments. And so as it went, uh, I I extended our appreciation on behalf of the board and, and to those who called and, and congratulated the district, but I was trying as best I could to manage uh, that afternoon, and though it was very good news, I too, just like you, I was pleased. When I read further, though, yeah. uh, <laughs> you had to, you I, I took pause for a moment because I wanted exactly. to see 24 months uh, <laughs> within the correspondence, but that's not what I saw. But still, I will take 12 because I know we did far more with the 12 that we had than anybody anticipated. Yes. And I know that we can do the same this year. Well, that said, it was, it was probably best, and I made a quick decision after conferring with the district's attorney just to hold a press conference on Monday. There were far mm -hmm. too many people calling, and, and I could not reach out. In all due respect to the board at all times, they deserve the right uh, first review of documents and be able mm -hmm. to go through exactly. documents. And so that's why I pressed pause on this situation, and we carried it over till Monday. That's good. The attorneys were working on another case. One was in Austin. Again, everybody was somewhat <laughs> scattered. Everybody was not in Houston. And so that said, <laughs> they too wanted the opportunity to come and sit down with the board and work through those situations. And so I don't know if I can control that in the world we live in now. It seems like like information moves so very swiftly yes, and so very quickly. And so as you get it, I just try as best I can mm -hmm. to, to temper any concerns that people have and try to bring everybody together and galvanize them at a central location when we can all move as quickly as we could in lieu of the fact that we had to work around the attorney schedules and getting back in town and some other situations. And stuff. <coughs> but it was a good day. Yeah. A great day. It was, it was a it was great a day. Great, great day. It was. 
I tell you, I, could, I was so elated over the fact, and I, of course, I, I said, what happened to the two years? Why, what, why couldn't they just give two years? Of course, we understand how uh, when you're over something, you're, you know, they have the, the last, almost the last say. And they made the last say, but we got another say coming too. And that's what I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to. And I know we have, as they call you sometimes, the golden child. Oh I know we have the golden child. Oh, listen, that, that's a compliment. I, I think it, <coughs> it, it took the collective efforts of many people, but I know that when we went down for the file review, actually it was a two-day very intensive hearing, and that was groundbreaking. It's yeah. never been two days yes. under any district closure in the state of Texas. That means you were putting down some good stuff. Yeah, but I, then they, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was beyond what they were ready for. If we made it difficult for See, them to say. that's exactly what I'm talking about. Beyond what they expected. Absolutely. Even though they have said, and we know it has to be done. We know that the academics has to be there. <coughs> we know that the finance have to be there. We want pro probably, I wouldn't say probably, no, we want more mm -hmm. than what the state want on the completion rate. Yes. You know, we want those things. And, and I heard you mention that, and you said it, I think, a few minutes ago, that we were going to make the completion rate this year. Correct. But you've already predicted what the completion rate would be for next year, which is somewhat kind of impossible. It, it actually is. The class of 2011, which was last school year, is a closed year. The class mm -hmm. of 2011, the completion rate, as it comes out under the accountability framework, it's a year deferred. So it will show up this August, but it will be for the class of 2011, not for the class of 12. 2012. The and class of 12 won't show up until 13, 14. And the commissioner knows this. I, yes, I would think he, I'm quite sure he does. If he, if he doesn't know it, if he look at 43.5, mm, he will know he it. He will hear it. He'll the voice will be able to, <laughs> to, to let them know <laughs> that he needs to do some research and hear that. Right. Um, someone asked, well, did he give us all of these demands for failure? And I like your word. She said he left something there for, what was it? I said additional conversation and negotiation. We do have some points that we have to, I try to be tactful, but we do have some points that we need to negotiate. The same way we went down for two days and we had to negotiate some things. Mm. And so our position was not to be adversarial because just like you mentioned, Maxine, we want the same things. Exactly. Yeah. Actually, if you come down to North Forest Independent School District, it is a thriving district. Yes, it is. It's had some difficulties in regards to the accountability frameworks and some of the transitions that have happened have allowed uh, some situations to be as they are. But nonetheless, it is a school district that's doing extremely well as compared to others. We're, a, we're considered a small urban school school district, but there are rules and there are suburban school districts across the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. But as an urban school district, we are doing extremely well in North Forest Independent School District and people need to know that, not to be exactly. misrepresented. Say it again. Say it again. We, we are, are doing, doing extremely, extremely well in North Forest Independent School District. We are doing extremely district. well. Matter of fact, so much so, as, as mentioned earlier, our size, our scale is very relevant. There's so much more that we can do. Mm -hmm. We can accelerate achievement in North Forest Independent School District far more than a larger <coughs> scale independent <coughs> school district. There are far more layers mm -hmm. of decision making. Mm -hmm. there's, there's much more that one would have to do to bring in initiatives. That's how we were able to recruit and work with NYU. And the reason why we sought out NYU, all, do, all due respect to the great state of Texas, but we needed to work with an entity that had done some work with urban development right. frameworks in education. And That's so good. we solicited that partnership and it's going extremely well. Wonderful. And even with someone like Dr. Pedro Negero working with North Forest Independent School District, mm -hmm. I would say for him to come in and assess the situation and say, we could do it in two. That was something that made the agency take pause. It's possible. To do but it. we need to be able to, we need to have about two years to be able to get it done. Something they didn't do in four. Right, and I think that's because <clears throat> applying the wrong treatment mm -hmm. to the whatever else to the, the person soul. does not mm -hmm. resolve the situation. And I think, though, it goes back to intentions, but you know what they say about those. You're right. I think the intentions may have been good, but nonetheless, applying the wrong methods, not being able to come in. And I say this to everybody. I mean it most sincerely. The students, you have to love the students. Right. You have to come out and understand the students that we serve. And though I cannot change the students that we serve, I will change the way we serve the students. There you go. North Forest is going to become a service yes. district. And so when we're looking at the students that are coming in, we want to make sure that we meet them where they are. Mm -hmm. exactly. We're going to meet you where you are. Well, it has always been over the years that North Forest has always met 
the students where they were. Absolutely. And that's why when any time our students graduated or went to college, or they are successful yes. because we met our students where they were. And our teachers were on the, the high list, mm -hmm. come from North Forest, high you first. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because they love children. And they would sacrifice more than what the average teacher or, or instructor would do for the lower amount of pay. Correct. And I just, I want to bring this in for our teachers because they are the heart of everything. Yes, they yeah. are. Next to the parents. I agree. And uh, they are the ones that can mold a child or destroy a child. And the teachers out here in North Forest have always mold mm -hmm. and brought forth the children's uh, abilities and their talents, no matter where they lived or, or what, how much money their parents had or what they didn't have, and we were always treated with love. And yes. they need to be committed. And I'm, 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 I'm a proud of Governor Farris, I want you to know that right. too. <laughs> and uh, we are, I, I, I became a teacher because I had wonderful teachers yes. who cared and who want to see us succeed in life. And that's the same thing with the teachers out here in North Forest that has stayed and stuck and given all that they could give. And they're still on a lower salary. And that's love. That you is know, love. Uh, the superintendent said earlier, uh, uh, a few minutes ago, about if you come to North Forest, you love North Forest. Yeah, North you Forest know, love you and, back and, too. Yeah, and, and, and that you, you, you really love it. And someone called me, you know, I, I've often told, asked people if they ever find a red telephone to please buy it for me and I'll reimburse them their money back because the phones, you know, just, just kept ringing, Maxine, Maxine. What they didn't mention, they didn't mention some of the other things on their demands is where the commissioner is demanding that we become single member district. That means that- For what? For the board for the Board of Education. That right. means that this part of town would have a person, that part of town, and you could only live in that little segment. Well, right. this community is, that's that's his. Oh, that's his, that's, that's his state. Demand. Oh, okay, that's his And demand. the thing about it is, oh, uh, the why is that, I think he feels that that should be um, an Hispanic on the school board. Well. But the fact is, is that the community is so small and it's hard enough to try to get someone who's willing to serve on a school board, there's a lot of work put into it for no pay. And with a small, we're not as large as Houston and and big districts uh, like that that have the single member well, district. Uh, but me, the thing about it, no, let me uh, say this, is that he, he wants to do that. And we've always been a community that everybody, in regards to the race, mm -hmm. religion or whatever, we have been, always been that community, and people are willing to serve. We're not going to let him come in here and divide our community of all of us working together. We're going to continue to work together as we are doing. But I cannot see us being a, a single member district. We've been working well this way. This community came forward when the commissioner came forward and said, "We, you have some problems. The community revamp just about the entire board the community did that okay and we <laughs> and then the community ca came in here now and they have a superintendent working uh -huh. so we're doing the things that they want us to do and we want well, them he, to know that we're going to continue doing well first of all you got to look at the fact that we have a superintendent now that's uh really up to par and I, I call her the lady that walked the walk and talked the talk. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Ah. I say we have one that can walk the walk and talk the talk. And, and we're going to, uh, the more we stick together, back in our school board as well as our superintendent, it's no way possible they can make us do most anything they want us to do. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to happen that way. We still are the people. But that's, still, that is just one of still, the restrictions yes, that, they have, but, that they have put down. But what I want to say is that when we elected the board, we heard, and I heard Ms. Edwards say this morning, that they, the board is, uh, and the superintendent was cons considered a team of eight. And that say a team of eight, that means a lot. 
that means that the board Going is along. working along with the superintendent right. and they're working as a team. Now, we, we received this one year, but we are not out of the dark. So I, I want to say something along the lines of what you're saying. And because I have a wonderful board that I work with and we're able to exercise diplomacy when, when others can't sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, when they were going back and looking at Northport's Independent School District and they were really going through the Texas Education Code, this was Chapter 11 on board, so when mm -hmm. they went back through. And so to satisfy any requirement, a public conversation is nothing I am ever reluctant to have. And so I even talk with the board about it. It doesn't mean it's, it's to the community's pleasure what the design of the district will be, whether it will be single member, at large, or a combination of both. Mm -hmm. But to have the conversation for the sake of diplomacy and for the sake of saying, check, we did that, we're not opposed. We're having a piece of the conversation now. <laughs> now you know. Now you know. So we're having, we're a, piece having of, a piece of that conversation now. We're having a piece of the conversation now. Exactly. You will now hear it exactly. on UAGN. But it's so good when you, when you have a board that work with you yes. and you're all working together. You don't always agree, but you can disagree agreeably. Yes. And you can get the job done. Um, it Come is. on, board member. Ex board member. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. In the role of ex board member. I know because you know sometimes there was a time when a superintendent Return. would call me and I would say, "Oh, no way, no right. way, no way." When I go with that, and they talk, talk. I said, "Okay, <laughs> now if if you really truly feel that strongly, go on. But if you screw up." I'm be, not with be, you. Be, be prepared. Right, absolutely. <laughs> and so when the, you can get the board that way, and I think the community worked together to get a board to come in, and they made a great decision on employing the superintendent that we have now, and they're working together. And I, I, I see North Forest Independent School District back to the point where it was in uh, 1977, 78, 68. <laughs> <laughs> we going all back. Go I can see back. it all the way back. I wasn't all the way to now. Oh, you were still. Oh, you went. You went I elementary then. I, I know. Eighty. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we looking. What we looking, yeah. we looking forward to having a a, a a great year coming this year, and uh, that's to come up because I know that not only and you know a lot of people don't like the the they say it politically incorrect. When you bring God in, I'm finna bring God in, and I'm gonna be politically incorrect. I'm going to say that by the help of the good Lord, we're going to make a a place for children to be comfortable, to enjoy learning, and want to go to school. What can we do? I agree. That's what it's all about. To assist you. Well, one of the things you can do, and I, I talked about this a bit earlier during the day, was stay informed. Mm -hmm. You know, stay informed so that you will be engaged. We're going to do more things as I work with the board, and I don't want to get in front of some of the decision making that lies before them. They have so mm -hmm. much to do. Mm -hmm. We have so many meetings, but we will be devising advisory panels. Mm -hmm. We will be looking for expertise from those that are educators and those who are business people and others to come in and help us with our endeavors as we move forward. We want to be held accountable. Please understand that too. Yes. If, if, if there's something that can improve, that's why you're seeing more surveys, more solicitation of input. We want to not only hear from the community and from the parents, we want to hear from the students that we serve. Exactly. There, there that's are the, main that's, what, that's your, that's your, that's your exactly. what you call it, that's the line right there. Absolutely. And that's so from the, the, from the voice of the child. Mm. You know, and so we've heard a lot from the high school already. And yeah, so with okay. that, we're taking that feedback, though, and we want to do something more to better accommodate them. And so come out to the public meetings that we have. Go into the schools, though. I say school really happens where the parent crosses the threshold of the door of the school. Mm -hmm. Go into the school into the libraries, into the corridors. I mentioned something earlier that we'll be working on, which is safe corridors, safe sidewalks, better community, where we all come together to make North Forest Independent School District a better place, and the community as well. We're going to do our part inside the walls. As we're well, going to ask right. the community to help us outside the walls, and we're going to build this community to the point where anybody who comes into North Forest Independent School District will be inspired to have come That's and right. will leave a change person. So you have heard, <coughs> you've heard the superintendent today, today talking. You brought us this for, and you didn't bring us this for to leave us. Uh, we know we're gonna go. We know we're gonna go further. And yeah. as Marcus <clears throat> stated, it's a brighter day. Superintendent, thank you, board. Thank you, thank you, employees, the teachers, the staff, all of the staff, the bus driver, yes. the cafeteria, 
the custodians and everybody for a job well done. And we are here to support you in every way that we can. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank all of you, our audience uh, today, for listening in with us and join us. You're on Urban Houston Network, 43.5. The Voice. And don't forget to go vote. And we are looking forward to our children having a, a wonderful year coming next year and having a good time after this summer coming up. And we are going to continue to pray for you and you pray for us and God bless you. Thank you for watching. Stay right where you are and we will be right back with our superintendent with more information. Hi, I'm Alma from Urban Houston Network. Do you need your bottom line to look better? Then you need to call UHN and let us help you with your bottom line by advertising with us. Call us today at 832-582-7118. That's 832-582-7118. If your business, program, or product needs more exposure, then Urban Houston Network can help you achieve those goals right now. Church groups and community organizations are welcome to platform your message. So call us today and let UHN be the platform for you. That number again is 832-582-7118. And remember, Urban Houston Network, it's a lifestyle. Welcome back to The Voice. Well, uh, before taking a break, we were talking to our superintendent, Ms. Edna Forte, about the North Forest Independent School District. She's given us so much good information. One, another thing we want to bring out, though, is uh, parent involvement. You know, I, the way I got started in North Forest is being parent involvement with PTA, getting in surprise, getting life membership. Yeah extended life membership. I'm going to mm -hmm. be a PTA member even when I'm dead. <laughs> That'll so, work out. <laughs> it's beyond life. Yeah. So what can the parents do to get involved? You said we needed volunteers and to stay informed. But exactly what can the parents do and how do they go about uh, becoming involved? I'm so glad you brought up that topic. It's a very important topic. There are several different ways to become involved, and everybody knows of the PTA, and that's one of the most important ways to become involved in any school. Mm -hmm. Mr. Winfrey has worked with the PTA in the community, so currently I'm working with Ms. Antillis with the PTA. But I ask that every parent at the beginning of the school year and even through the course of the school year, they become involved in their PTA. That's their opportunity to have their voice. Heard. There are mm -hmm. monthly meetings where they can come in and they can communicate with the teachers, with the administration, and that's where decisions are made. I think oftentimes people believe all the decisions are made in central administration. That is not the case. Far mm -hmm. from the truth. We do listen to our schools and to our campuses and our communities. So first and foremost, become involved in the PTA. Come into your schools and every one of the schools in North Forest Independent School District has a PTA. So okay. that's, that's one cool. way. The district also has brought in additional support in regards to parental involvement in the district. We have a family involvement uh, specialist that's working throughout the district to help us build up more opportunities for parents in regards to programs they might be interested in. Coming new next year, we'll be having our annual parent involvement conference, which will be a three-day conference good. that is held in North Forest Independent mm. School District. I'm very excited about that. How that's about coming that? up. We're actually right now seeking to find out exactly what parents would be most interested in, but it will be an opportunity for parents to come in, have a leisurely lunch, move through various sessions that will help them in working with their students. Specifically at the high school level, we thought it was most important to bring in some additional support with parental involvement. What happens at the high school level so often, our youth become very independent That's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and don't want mama there. And they don't necessarily always convey to Not parents what's going on at school. And so we brought in some additional help at the high school level to make sure that we were staying in communication with our parents. And so at the end of every grading period, we have an opportunity for the parent and the teachers to come together and sit down and talk about the child's performance because we want meaningful parental involvement. We want to be able to come out and celebrate in a nice occasion. We want to have our battle of the bands and we want to have our programs. And we want to be able to highlight the things that our students are. Our students are so talented in yes, North Forest Independent School Very District. Talented. And we want to be able to highlight that. But we also want to make sure that our parents know academically mm -hmm. how the students are doing. 
and keep them engaged that way. So being able to come in and at the high school level, because we know completion rate or graduation rate is an issue for the district, we're becoming very proactive about that and we're leveraging some high yield strategies. And some of that is not waiting for the student to go home and tell the parent what is very difficult. I did not do well this term, mother. And so we have our counselors working with our parental involvement advocates to reach out to those parents. And if the parent can't come to the school, they go to the parent. Oh, good. And they have the conversation. They sit down and say, this is what's going on with Mary, and we need to help her. So That's timely good. intervention. That's Those are some fantastic. of the things that we are doing. You know what that reminds me what? of? When I was in uh, high school where the, the teacher would stop by the house. Yes. And, the, and then they'll, uh, I'm, I'm going to see your mother today. I'm going to see you there. And they'll stop by the house and, right. and bring a, a report yes. on you. And they get together. That sounds just similar to that. You must right. have been a tough cookie class. <laughs> no. Uh, well, I, 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 I was uh, one chilling. <laughs> As my uncle used to call me, your, that one chilling, um, we are, yes, that, this, it, it was an involvement where the teachers would take a, a, an important role mm -hmm. in the growing up of a child. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, when I was growing up, the whole community took a role. Miss Miss Lottie down the street would tell mother what went on, and there was uh, Mr. Wells on the other side telling what went on. Uh, it might even grab you and give you a little spanking, and then tell your mother. So all of those things, uh, it sounds like we're getting back to that old landmark. Everything old is new again. Yeah, there you go. It's, it's, I like that. Nothing I like under that. nothing under the sun. Especially when you're my age. Right. <laughs> <laughs> nothing under the sun <laughs> is new. For some of the parents who may fear the fact that I don't know anything about teaching and I don't know anything about doing this or I don't know anything about doing that, are there other activities or something in the school that could make them feel real comfortable in what, what they do? And Well, we want to make sure coming into the... I believe in laboratory settings. I want people to feel disarmed. I want them to be comfortable when they come into the school. Mm -hmm. And so for the parent who's not able to provide the extra time in a given subject area, for instance, uh -huh. maybe a parent, it's not their preference to do algebra. Maybe that's the parent that's would true. prefer something else. We want to make sure that we at least set up opportunities or laboratories where students can come in for some additional review for some additional review. And so I'm very careful with my words sometimes because I believe words do one or two things. They leverage up or they level down. There you and go. so I'm, I'm very careful about the words that I use, but I want the parents to be able to come in and feel comfortable enough to ask. But we'll be doing more because we will be opening up some new labs in the high school over the summer. We want to do more to engage the parents so that they too have opportunities to learn more about uh, things and actually possibly build out their career opportunities in the future. And so there's some things on the horizon. Can I come at lunchtime? Yes, ma'am. There's oh. some things on the horizon in, in North Forest Independent School District. And so we're going to build it to a account because we're here to serve. And I say that all the time. We're a service at school district, and we're going to find a way to serve not only the students but the community, build back that sense of community. Yeah, when and I, that, sis, that sense of uh, togetherness yes. needs to come back again. And uh, I hope that we are working on the personalities in the front this mm -hmm. on at the front office the personalities have to uh, reflect you have to reflect all of us <laughs> in the community and the personality sometimes clashes mm -hmm. with the parents and that should not be right. our parents are, are first at North Forest and they should always be first mm -hmm. and we should treat them as such even though it doesn't seem like some of them are parents some of them act like they're children sometimes but we still have to treat them as parents and we need to treat them good, and we need to treat them right, and we have to give them respect. That's what is necessary. We must treat each other with respect. Dignity and, and respect. Yes, and dignity and love. Absolutely. And uh, once you once you reject that uh, that love, I I do believe that this district will get back to where it once was. And I think we do have the right leader and the right board. And uh, we look forward to having a, a glorious year, as I stated before. Now, I want to ask you something about the property. Mm. What are we going to do with all these vacant uh, buildings? 
<laughs> Currently, the board is taking into consideration some options in regards to property. This actually came up during our file review in, at the agency. We have a means of possibly liquidating property that could lend itself to helping the district build back a fund balance. But that, of course, that's up to a board vote. They are seriously looking at that. They're putting in place all the things necessary mm -hmm. in, in regards to realtor and all things necessary to move forward in that direction. We do not want to have properties that are not occupied that take away from the community. Uh, as it should be, and so we'll be working aggressively. And also as we liquidate pro property, we build in a, a broader tax base for North Forest Independent School District. We receive about $41 million in state revenue into the district, and then we have about a 14% match that comes in locally. So we get about a 14%, we get about 14 to 17 million on the local match of tax dollars that come in, and then we have the federal match that comes into the district. And so we have an obligation to make sure that we use our property. So we want to make sure as we do liquidate property that when we decide to sell the property that we're making the best decisions. And yes, those decisions actually. basically come back to benefit the district. Okay. Now, um, do you know what schools are going to be closed this coming year? There's a recommendation, matter of fact, on tomorrow night during a board meeting, the board will be considering the recommendation for the closure of Rogers Elementary School. And please let me say this, closures are never easy. It's, it's a difficult thing, but there is a part of education that is business, mm -hmm. where you have to look at the bottom line, and it's driven by data. And so we went back and we looked at the enrollment trend at that school. We actually looked at the location of the school in regards to uh, insurance policies, where it sits, you know, what is the mm -hmm. nature. And we've, I've brought a recommendation to the board to consider closure of Rogers Elementary School because it will provide the district uh, a better opportunity to save some on, on some of the expenditures. There's only two ways really where you can build back a fund balance and bring a district to a place where it's solvent. And that's through, you have to look at the, you have to reduce your expenses and you have to build in your revenue. So you have to reduce expenditures, build revenue. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's the formula to make that happen. And no. so, though difficult, that's where we are. Rogers is the school that we're looking at. Uh, now, to build revenue, can you give us some something that you can tell us about building revenue? Like, would it be through the athletic department? Will it be renting out the buildings that are vacant? What, what kind of revenue do you have in mind? Well, one of the things that we're currently doing, when we lease out the top floor, we had additional space, square footage, occupancy mm -hmm. space at Forest Brook Middle School, and that's the reason why we went into the partnership with HCC and we leased out that top floor. And so mm -hmm. that's a revenue stream for the district. And so they bring revenue into the district to be able to utilize that space. There are other buildings in our school district that we can still retain as our property, but build them out or allow another individual to come in and renovate the building and utilize the building within a lease concept. So every property will not necessarily be a property the board decides to sell, but those are ways of bringing large amounts of revenue into the district. Athletic events always, but the larger amounts are gonna come probably from our property liquidation. Okay, all right. But we're hoping within that, that those that may resurrect a new business for, yeah, for the community, so. it adds value to the community. If there is a veterinarian clinic that goes up, oh, that yeah. adds value to the community. And so exactly. we want to make sure if we have a partnership with a local community college, that adds value to the community. So that will always be the premise of every decision. Good. It will have to add value to the community. Exactly. What about the um, STAR testing? Do you think, let me just ask you this, <laughs> let me ask you this, what, do, how do you feel about testing a student to graduate? I think that it's something we're not going to move away from in our, in our nation. Uh, there are standards to get into certain universities, into certain places, and even under certification requirements for career readiness programs, there are certain standards. And so, I don't believe it should be the sole indicator of a child's proficiency, though. I don't either. I think there are other ways that you can determine whether a child is proficient. Every child does not test well. But I believe because we're a, a mobile nation, gone are the days where we stay in one location or locale. I can be in Texas today, California tomorrow. And so to level the field a bit, I believe there's always going to be a standard of some type of assessment to make sure that the learning is transferable. And you know, so, but they wouldn't. They, I, I, I don't feel like that. Uh, we should base everything on testing. Testing, testing shouldn't be based on because that if that, 
I think when the president runs for president, does he have to take a test? Yeah, you know, that is not at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, and the senator <laughs> runs for a senator. Does he you have know, to take a test? When it comes to uh, educating our children, there's so much that we could talk about, and I think we could hold another session on this. <laughs> yeah, we yes. talk on, but uh, gee, we're just so grateful to you uh, for you taking your time to come and visit with us and let the uh, audience be able to see and to hear exactly what's going on in North Forest. Maybe after you get some of this done, you'll come back and visit with us again, and we'll have another session. It will be my pleasure.